Greetings my friends, we have an interesting episode today. After my long term vacation I was looking through the piles of email messages and found out that lots of people keep asking me about what is this new and interesting software in which I am currently working. And I have to note that it's been more than a year since I have switched from Cubase to the DAW software called Reaper. And today we shall talk about cons and pros of Cocos Reaper. Let's go, come on everybody in the house! It is Foya who would like to optimize his workflow to make the creation of the tracks faster. I have tried looking through internet resources and to be honest I had no luck finding any video where one would tell adequately about the cons and pros of this software. So let us start from the cons. The main cons for me are in the fact that the work with the swinging reaper is not implemented in the main arrangement window. For example, we create the MIDI item, here we can see the swing function and the strength of swing in persons. It would seem that everything is cool, but if we want to see the same thing in the main window, then the same option does not exist, unfortunately. In other words, if we need to adjust some sounds, loops or the vocals to the grid with the swing, then it can be done in the software version 4.7. We can choose the long path. For example, we define the peaks of the signal so it is comfortable to cut it. As you can see, the tool works very precisely. Here are some extras that are not necessary here, so we choose the option Split Selected Items. Split. Those pieces which were cut by mistake, we use the Heal function for them. Heal splits in items. It is very suitable if you have cut something by mistake. Now we call up the Groove Tool window. Show Groove Tool. And here we can use the different swing models. Akai MPC swings Logic Audio swings, the ones from Korg, and so on. It all works, as you can see. So as you can see, the method to do it is very uncomfortable, takes a lot of effort and for example, if you would like to swing the vocal part, then it is extremely uncomfortable to do it. So we have to do with some form of the destructive editing here. There is no built-in sampler with the instruments. There is fairly good sampler available in Reaper, but I am using it for work with one-shots, with so-called single samples. We can load the sample. and switch There are settings to do with volume, panning, pitch. Unfortunately, there is no mode for the time stretching here. It means that when we change when we change the pitch, then the length of the sample is not observed. Also I meant that there is no sampler with the instruments library in Reaper, as it is the case with Helen in Cubase or the EXS sampler in Logic. Essentially, there is its own sampler in every serious DAW. However, I should note that basically, in about 90% of my tracks, I'm using either Nexus for the quick sketches or contact sampler, 
Hence, the problem of the absence of the built-in sampler here is not a big deal for me. But seems like it can become a problem for someone else. There are no built-in synthesizers in Reaper. To be exact, there are. It is a built-in which comes in a standard package which is called RareSynth. Also, people do write JS scripts with their synths, but it all looks approximately the same way as we can see here. However, I should note that the quality of the processing in JS modules is very high. Personally, to give an example, I adore using the built-in distortion called MOOC24. My standard settings with drive at 30%, the oversampling is turned on. This filter gives a very pleasant distortion. So, if you are looking for the door with the built in synthesizers, for example, I really like the built in synthesizers in Logic Audio. So, if you would like to switch to Reaper, then you should take care in advance about the choice of the descent, of the descent synthesizers. It's Zebra for me, Spire, and more seldom it's Massive. There is also no built-in way to listen to the presets from the synthesizers from the browser. Insert track from template. In Cubase I really like an option where you could play with some instrument that you have chosen in order to listen how does this track template really sound. Unfortunately, there is no such opportunity in Reaper. But on the other hand, there are some other very useful functions present here. What I mean is that we can save the items along with the track templates, which are located on these tracks and the envelope. It is very useful if we have some kind of modulation added, plus the automation added to that. Here we have the part written down. We can add the automation. Save it. Call it a test, which is not standing for testosterone. Enable both options. Save. The track presets can also be loaded with the Media Explorer, Track Templates, and just drag it over. It is very comfortable. The simple hotkeys are not working in the open windows. For example, we are dropping some part and want to solo the channel or mute it. I have the mute function set up for the M shortcut key in my case in the arrangement window. When I switch to the editing of the MIDI item, then the M key is not working for me. So I have to set up the complicated hotkey which is Ctrl Shift Alt M for me. The next cons are uncomfortable defining of tempo of the complex audio files. In the case with the simple audio files, all is simple. We take some loop, enable the tempo match function, as you can see, it all matches to the tempo without problems. But if we take some track then without knowing its tempo, it will be quite difficult to define it automatically and will take a long time. As a rule, it's all been done the next way. We cut the start of the bar. We cut the end of the bar. We select this area. And pick the function set project tempo from time selection or detect tempo to put it in simple terms. Here we have the tempo detected and so we have to multiply 64 by 2 which is 128. And the last thing that belongs to the cons, well, maybe it is not cons for someone, but I shall note that I did not switch to Reaper from the first try. It was only after the second try, the learning process took me about two months. However, my colleagues are telling me that it took them about 30 days. It is for you to decide to switch or not to switch. And now let us talk about the pros of this awesome piece of software. Firstly, it is the size. In my case, Reaper takes approximately 80 megabytes in my machine. 
so you can freely have it on USB thumb drive and visit some other remote studio to walk in. There are no additional K dongles or protection mechanisms here, only your serial number. If you are using the demo version, it is fully functional and it works if my memory serves me well for one month and then you just open your software and see the window that says that you are using the software in the demo mode with the offer to buy it. You only have to wait for the few seconds, click OK and continue your work. The protection they have here is extremely loyal to the customer. The second moment which is very important for me is the speed of the loading of the program. For me Ripple loads for 2 to 3 seconds at most and I remember those times with a bit of horror when I was running Cubase and was waiting for a long time, at times it was for 30 seconds. If you take it into consideration that all of my setup is built up on SSD drives, it is a very big time loss for the loading of the software only. Plus to that, the settings of the plugins were getting lost in Cubase at times and they all would start the scanning process all over again. The next moment is the price of the software. Currently the price is being at $60 for the individual users and the small business and $225 for the large business. Another moment, which is quite important to me, is the correction of bugs in the software. The upgrades are coming out very often and I even had the experience when I have found the bug, told about it on the official forum and it was fixed during two weeks time. The next pros are belonging to something which you all surely could notice by my reviews and ask me lots of questions about it. It is their interface which you can adjust for yourself. Note that I am giving out my personal configuration for the public domain. Feel free to use it and switch to this wonderful software. As for so-called actions and the hotkeys, then it is just for A plus in Reaper. You can write your own actions. The search function works in a very cool way. You drag it all over, switch the places, copy and export. It is very comfortable. As you can see, I have around 100 of the custom actions here. Probably it is all because of my switching to Reaper from Cubase. I wanted the hotkeys and some functions to be fully like to the functions I had in Cubase for them, just in order to ease down the switching from Cubase to Reaper. All is being set up here in a very flexible and comfortable way. As you can see, I have the grid displayed here below, the hotkeys to load my synthesizers, above that the different functions for rendering, different scripts, coloring of the tracks and the items. Different functions for the work with the stretch markers, for the work with the tracks. For example, I can transform dual mono with one key, which means two mono files into one stereo file or backwards split the stereo track into two mono tracks or just turn stereo item into a mono item. In other words, there is no concept in Reaper as such be it mono, stereo, stereo or multi-channel. It can be any. If we come into the settings for the routing, then we see that there can be up to 64 channels. Not so big but quite comfortable feature is a search in the software's preferences. As you know, in Cubase and in Fruity Loops as well, there are lots of options. The doors are getting bigger, software is constantly being developed. There are more and more options, so the search function among them is not implemented in any way. So here we can see the ideal invention, the search window. For example, we enter FX and everywhere where you can meet FX, we can see that it is highlighted in red color. The only negative side of the preferences window is that it can't be made bigger or resizable. The next moment which is extremely important to me is the performance of the ACO driver. Majority of people are thinking that the more powerful their computer is, the more powerful the project is that they are able to make. In truth, it is not really so. The stumbling block here is ACO. It is a piece of software through which the sound is being produced in our DAW program, so we can hear it afterwards. The, the implementation of ACO in different DAWs is different. 
For example, in Cubase, if the load indication was higher than 60%, I was getting some pops and clicks in the project. To put it short, it was impossible to work and if I was calling up the task manager window, all the cores were loaded at about 50%. In the case with Reaper, we have to do with a very cool OCO driver, which is working in a very stable way, even at the load close to 80%. Also, I can leave out the fact that Reaper works really nice with the little latency settings. And if in Cubase I was forced to, I was forced to work with a buffer of 1024 samples, then here I can freely work at 256 samples in the heaviest projects. Also in Reaper we can see that the work with the files of the different sample rates in the same project is extremely comfortable. I mean that we can use tracks in the same project that are not at 44 kHz. Now they are the same as the general frequency of the project. And also we can use the tracks of any other sample rates. They are being automatically resampled to match the frequency of the project. It is very comfortable and useful. It is just saving you lots of time, because if I was working in Cubase, I had to do resampling to make the frequency of the project and it could take about an hour. In my opinion, it was a loss of time in a vein. Also, the very cool function is copy-paste between the projects that are open at the same time and their simultaneous playback. Ctrl C. Switch to the other project, Ctrl-V. Just a dream of any producer that wants to quickly drag the instruments from one project to the other, along with the tracks, automation and so on. One more interesting function is that we can use any amount of the items on our track. Also, I like the nice and comfortable envelopes on the items, the panning, the volume and the pitch. On the contrary to Cubase, it works here without hiccups. If we had the material that was attached to the grid, then using the pitch envelope we could observe such unpleasant moment as the misplacing of the transients in regard to the grid. It is not the case here. As you can see, it all goes right. Pay attention that the mode selected here is pitch shifter parameter synchronized. And pay attention that by pressing F1, the standard key combination of the item properties. Here you can choose the algorithm for each item separately, or algorithms that are selected in the project's properties. And one more bonus is the ability to use the effects not for the track, but for the item. The people that see this function, they just start screaming from delight. Let us try to apply some effect. The only downside is that we can't write the automation for the effects which are applied to the item. Also, pay attention that if we are using some kind of plugin in any of the inserts, then we easily drag it to any of the items and it is being added to the chain of the item's effects. It can also be done from the effects browser. We drag any effect and voila! Also, a very interesting function is so-called unquantize for the MIDI items. Let me record some part from the MIDI keyboard like a scribble. Mm -hmm. 
Now we quantize this part by pressing the Q key. Here you go, 1025 hours pass and we suddenly remember that this quantization is not needed here at all. Don't forget to highlight all the nodes. We go to Edit, Quantize, Unquantize. Voila, it works. And my favorite function called External Editor. It is being set up in the preferences. It is exactly as it is called, the tab External Editor. I am using Melodyne single track. Here I have the custom action called Wax Melodyne It. If you take a look inside, everything is pretty simple. At first, the item is being transformed into a separate one. Then it is being opened in the, pri in the primary external editor. Let us see how it works. We select it, press the required combination of keys and Melodyne is started up. Why is it comfortable? It's simple as that. For example, we have long 3 minute long vocal, which we would like to edit in Melodyne. While using the Melodyne editor in the insert, we would have to wait a long time until it is recorded in the Melodyne editor and is being recognized. And here we just run it separately and it is quickly being analyzed. It saves the time greatly. And of course, I already spoke about the stretching algorithm, Elastix 3. In a given moment, it is being used only in Reaper 4 software. It is the most quality stretching algorithm. However, I must confess, sometimes I use the algorithm called Elastic 2.2.8. There are no universal recipes here. One has to listen, use one's own ears. But the most radical tempo changes that I do are done only in Reaper. It does it in a high quality way and I should note in real time. Also, in Reaper has a very comfortable way of moving by transcends and a good system of their detection. I would say that I am glad with this system for 95%. Of course, there are mistakes in recognition and one has to edit them manually. But let us see how it works in practice. We run the dynamic split items. Such window appears. And accept our being able to split things in such way for slices like that. We can use the function of replacing of these yellow grid lines by the stretch markers. In other words, affect our sample is non-destructive way. Now we have to pick the adequate settings of these parameters. As you can see, all is defined quite nicely. Press split. The stretch markers have appeared. It is very comfortable that they can be attached to the grid in a very quick way. Action called Snap Stretch Markers to Grid exists for that. As you can see, it all works in a very cool way. A very interesting moment, while the addition of the stretch marker is that we can change the position of the waveform in relation to the stretch marker. Let us try to delete all of stretch markers and set them manually. The tape key is responsible for moving to the next stretch marker by default. Move cursor to next transient in items. So we press the tape key. Set the marker, set the marker. As you can see, these little transients weren't defined by us automatically. They can be set manually. And now by pressing to the according hotkey, we attach them to the grid. Just imagine how fast you can correct and set the drum multi track with the help of the functionality of this particular DAW. One more pleasant moment is absolutely any desired amount of insert effects. It is not 8 like in Cubase, which was making me extremely annoyed and as we know, when the amount is restricted, you always feel lack of it. The same related to the send effects. 
I really like the comfortable sorting of plugins by folders. We create a folder. For example, we want to add a plugin by Steven Slade there. By the way, Virtual Mix Rack is a cool plugin, I recommend it. And maybe you would like to see its review from me. Write it in the comments, please. We got it added and now we can find them quickly and easily. And of course, the filter list. It works great here. It is a very comfortable plugin search. I just have to bring your attention to the very comfortable system of setup of the effect sense. I would note two of the most widespread scenarios. For example, we use the reverb here and we would like to process our loop with the sounds of this reverberator. Just drag it over. And let us imagine the situation that the amount of channels that we want to send to our reverb equals to a grid number. In Cubase, like in any other DAW for that matter, it is done in a very long way. We name our effect as reverb, enter the routing matrix, and then with an easy mouse click we add this send effect for such great amount of channels. It is very fast and very comfortable. I really like the system of the folder organization in Reaper, however, right at the beginning I just couldn't get the use to it. We highlight some amount of folders. In order to add of these tracks in a folder, we press a symbol and that's it. And now all the tracks that we have coming into the folder, they are being processed by the effects from so-called parent folder. I even wrote the script which by pressing the hotkey, add the selected tracks to a folder and there automatically pops up a window to rename the folder. And one more pleasant news. We want the band pass to open in some certain state that is necessary only for us. These lines are the default state. Double click returns to default. But we want the state to be like this. Save preset as default. And that's it. The next time plugin will open in the state. I shall tell you even more. There is a very interesting function. Let us add an EQ to the channel, compressor, distortion. And we want all the new channels that we open to be not empty, but already with these effects. There is a very cool function called Save Chain as default for new tracks. We choose it, make the new track, and as you can see, these effects are available in the insert. And my most favorite function is the dry wet for each plugin. Here is the settings ratio knob. We can change and also automate the values of processed and the clean signal, dry and wet signals. It is just a super feature and I had an extreme lack of this in Cubase. Also pay attention to an interesting function called parameter modulation. Here we want to automate this parameter. We choose param, parameter modulation. There are three functions, audio control signal, meaning we can use the peaks of incoming signal. Let us see how it works. Very cool. We can use the LFO, meaning the envelope, even sync to the tempo. The only strange moment is a very strange setup of the speed. I would prefer to see 1 quarter, 1 sixteenth in order to make it comfortable to set the speed of the envelope. Pay your attention that the ways in which the modulation parameter can work had three values. Negative, which is towards minus side. Centered. 
and the positive. This is the parameter by default. And also the link from the parameter function. We can tie it to the parameter of this plugin or the other plugin which has been in the insert of the channel. To cut it short, a very powerful thing. And if you like some chaos in your tracks, then these parameters can be changed in very small values. It will add life to your tracks. A very interesting function, I have used it recently, by the way. I had to record a vocal demo. I'm not a vocalist and it was very difficult for me to sing in a required tempo. That is why I have used this function of slowdown called play by create. And all of it works without the change of the tonality. And lastly, a very, very, very cool feature which will save your time and for some it will allow to go out and drink coffee and tea. The thing is called Render Queue. By calling up the rendering window, we can see Add to Render Queue function in the bottom left corner of the window. Now I shall explain how it works. For example, we would like to export some amount of the different versions of the same track. It is very simple to do in Reaper. For example, we want to solo some channels and export only this highlighted area. Time selection, only these tracks, add to the render queue. Now we highlight it. We want only these three tracks for our task and this area. Time selection, adding it to the render queue. Now we want to use all the tracks and the entire project. We add it to the render queue by changing the file name in advance. Yes. Now such short version from the first two loops. We add it to the render queue by renaming it in advance. In result, by having it all planned, we open up the render queue window See some amount of the versions of our project there, press render all and go do our things peacefully. It is just a mega feature, respect to the developers of Reaper for the special feature. So well my friends, let us sum it up now. Judging by the fact that I am working on this DAW software for more than a year now, this software suits me well. As for the DAW software that you want to choose specially for yourself and for your certain needs, there is only one option existing, in my opinion, to try everything which is available on the market now and choose the software where you feel most comfortable because the second most frequently asked question, which has to do with the DAWs, is a question known as which DAW sounds better. So there is, in my opinion, the tests which I have made and the tests which were made by my colleagues. One can say unambiguously that all the DAWs sound the same. It is digital and it all sounds absolutely identical. Try, keep searching. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope the video was useful for you. And until new mixes. And don't mister Roboto.